Good evening, everyone. So basically, we're gonna start. Um, uh, Nijat, maybe you can just start with the presentation. Yeah, thank you very yeah. much. Uh, yeah. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our uh, next webinar by Hospitality Insights. Today, we're going to talk about the uh, operator structure. Uh, we're mainly focusing on the uh, hotel operator, uh, the brand operator's structure how this structure works, what is need to be done, what are the objectives, and how in generally uh, it is uh, feasible for both owners and for the operator as well. Uh, we will uh, have a, um, housekeeping notes, so kindly, um, uh, be informed that the duration will be within one hour, one hour and a half. The recording already been started. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, kindly to put your questions in the uh, chat box or in our social media uh, commentary box. Uh, kindly to put all your uh, uh, muted, please. On muted mode, please. Do not un unmute it. Uh, and if you like to uh, comment for different questions or if you like to have any suggestions or commentary, you can subscribe to our social media channel. Uh, we will go ahead, we'll talk about the uh, agenda. Uh, so mainly we're talking about the operators itself. Now we'll talk about the models, agreements, uh, with the uh, operators, owner operator objectives, and obviously we'll show you the small case study uh, related to the PL profit and loss report uh, in order to make you to understand completely. In the end, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to uh, put it on the chat box. So, um, first we'll talk about the uh, the operators. Uh, who are their operators? As you know, um, you had known worldwide a lot of hotel chains like Marriott, Hilton, Accor, they do have uh, different brands. So this um, uh, mother chain, we call them mother chain, they are the uh, multi-branded chain who are uh, keeping their brands with the segmentation. So what are the segmentation? Uh, which kind of segmentation are we looking at? Uh, what is the differences between the segmentation? I would like to show it to you. Uh, this had been done by, in 2014, so you could able to see that uh, there are uh, luxury, upper scale, upper upper scale, upscale, upper mid scale, mid scale and economy levels or we call it segmentations. This segmentations uh, defining the brand itself. For example, in Marriott itself, you can able to know the luxury uh, properties such as Bulgari, uh, Ritz Carlton, JW Marriott. If you will go to the uh, upper upscale, it will be Marriott only and Renaissance. Some people are mixing between the five star and the four, four star. I would like to make a note here that it's not related about the five star or the four star. It's more related of the luxuriness of the brand and upper upscaleness of the brand. You can ask the question, what are the differences between them? I can give you a simple um, few examples. What are the differences between the luxury and upper upscale? For example, in luxury uh, scale, the room size uh, as per the new guidelines is about the 45 square meter, where in the upper scale, uh, upper, upper, upper uh, up scale is about 35 to 40 square meter. So already you can able to see that uh, there is a differences between uh, two segmentations, two level. Uh, therefore, uh, you can able to see the differences in the restaurant, in the services and the facilities as well. So uh, normally what we see in industry that five-star luxury hotels goes as JW Marriott, a five-star hotel goes as a Marriott, 
four-star upscale segmented hotel goes as a courtyard and four-star simple uh, facility with the limited facility we call it goes uh, upper mid scale mid scale and economy defined as a three-star hotels so you can able to see in this graph that uh, different mother chains have the different brands and as you know these brands are being uh, merged with the latest acquisition with the Marriott and the Starwood and Accor had merged with the uh, latest acquisition with the Fairmont and the Movenpick in their segmentation in their portfolio. So these are the general uh, understanding uh, the segmentation and the brand differences. Obviously each brand uh, defining their own brand standards and brand DNA we call it brand DNA because uh, if you will travel worldwide, you will see the same uh, DNA at each hotel. Uh, if you don't have any questions uh, about the segmentation, I will go to the next slide. Uh, on the next slide, we will talk about the uh, models and agreements. Uh, what are the models? Uh, what are the uh, agreements? So basically, uh, as you know, um, there are the owner-operator uh, relationship. And owner uh, depend on the brand, earlier I had showed you, depend on the segmentation, may sign an agreement with an operator. Uh, these agreements are uh, various enough nowadays. Maybe some of them you had heard it called uh, managed hotel, management hotel, calls HMA, franchise hotel. Uh, however, in the latest um, uh, decade, we can able to see that there are the different models as well. Uh, these models may not be particularly uh, seen or observed by you in the same region, in the same city. However, in the different cities, in different countries, continents, they are being well practiced. Uh, what are these models? So you can able to see here that there are the five models in generally uh, when we're speaking about the uh, operating the hotel. So first one is the managed hotel called HMA. Second is franchise hotel. Third is manchise hotel. I'll explain to you what's meaning of the manchise. Fourth is the owner operator. So owner is the operator of the hotel itself. And the fifth one is the owner tenant. So it's more about the renting the uh, hotel. So I would like to uh, start with the first one with the HMA. Uh, what it needs, what it takes, uh, what are the agreements, uh, detail of the agreements uh, between the owner and the operator. So let's take an example here. Uh, for example, you would like to uh, sign a deal with the um, Accor property, like a Pullman or the Marriott property, uh, the Marriott brand, and they will offer to you the HMA. They will offer to you the managed property. Of course, it's more depend on the willingness of the owners, the location, the city, the need, the demand and supply. There are many factors which need to be analyzed before uh, to offer the brand itself. But I'm giving you the short version that let's define that the hotel will be Pullman Hotel, for example. And here they are offering the uh, managed hotel, means uh, operator is going to manage on behalf of the owner. When you're offering the HMA, managed hotel, as you could see in below, it's more control. What does it mean more control? The control is more in the operator side. Operator have to make sure to run the hotel, to ensure the revenue, ensure the budget, estimated budget or approved budget, uh, estimated cost, estimated FFE, fixed furniture and equipment, uh, profit, and of course, return of investment. These are the more control goes into the operator side. It is the commitment and obviously, um, owner uh, may give some couple of performance agreement in order to achieve it. Uh, however, in this scenario, in the managed scenario, 
the control goes to the operator, which means owner is not involved into the operation, into any decisions in the hotel itself. Here are the uh, couple of the deals that um, they are negotiating in the uh, uh, with an operator. So initial fee, IT charge, technical fee, are the three areas where you can uh, where you're discussing it on the uh, development stage. It means hotel is not ready, so you're discussing it initial stage, which defines the initial fee. Uh, the calculation goes as a fixed rate plus the uh, number of the rooms, the charge per number of the rooms. So I can give you an example. For example, um, hotel with the 200 keys means 200 rooms. Uh, the charge number can go minimum $50,000 and additionally uh, $300 per key. So that means 60000 plus 50,000, 110,000 have to be paid in advance. IT charge, uh, there are the charges based on the uh, room, again, calculated per room, the amount of the room. Uh, technical fee, also uh, defined on amount of the room, uh, uh, which means the operator is giving the full uh, technical agreement or technical guidelines, how to build, how to infrastructure the room, in the with the same brand when this had been uh, defined and it had been agreed next after the hotel is operating opening and operating there are the couple of uh, scenarios which uh, operator is charging the owners so the fourth one as you see here is the basic fee basic fee is calculated per revenue so the percentage on the revenue uh, they are charging in the end of the month Incentive fee, which is uh, which we call uh, gross operating profit, uh, GOP. From the GOP, they are charging incentive fee. Uh, there are other fees also, depend on the brand, obviously. Marketing fee, reservation fee, and loyalty member fee. These are uh, giving well uh, understanding for the owner what charges will be, and what are the reasons for these charges. For example, I can give you an example of the reservation fee. Majority of the uh, owners, uh, they don't understand why they are charging for the reservation fee. Reservation fee is allowing you to connect globally. Uh, some of you may know GDS, uh, Global Distribution System. It's allowing the hotel to connect to the GDS, means you can able to uh, connect to the Amadeus and other uh, platforms and online you can able to show your inventory in the um, in the system worldwide which they can access uh, these are very uh, beneficial tool uh, for those uh, owners or owner representative who don't know who don't was not qualified in this they have to see the uh, value in this uh, proposal. So uh, we go to more control and obviously these charges I have put for you, maybe you would like to know, in average takes from 12 to 20 percent uh, in total the charges. That could be revenue wise, uh, GOP wise and other fees. It goes between the 12 percent to 20 percent. Franchising model uh, in the franchising model, it's the same as the initial fee, IT charge, and technical fee. However, in the franchisee, they are charging only per revenue. They're not charging as per the incentive fee. And I'll explain to you why. The differences between the franchisee and managed is that in franchisee, they are giving you the name, tools, and all the accesses related to the brand. However, they're not uh, making any decisions in the hotel. So that's why it goes under the category less control. So who's controlling more the hotel? It's the owner or the assigned person by the owner, in this case, owner representative or the board of director or a GM specific who is controlling on behalf of the owner. So franchising model are very uh, much spread around the world. I could say that franchising model is more successful than the managed hotel. Uh, because uh, operators are not involved into the decisions, marketing strategy, sales strategy, budget strategy, 
or uh, any uh, capex capital expenditure uh, strategy. So uh, pretty much here is the owner is the one who is controlling uh, the hotel and making the decisions. Obviously, you have to be a qualified person, uh, a person from the industry who knows uh, how to um, run the hotel. So the remaining one are the same, basically, marketing fee, reservation fee, loyalty fee. As I had told you before, it's a less control. So here, as the less control it goes, the percentage is also is dropping compared to the managed agreement. So uh, based on the HVS uh, consultants and company, they had made it a survey uh, that it goes uh, minimum by 8%, maximum to the 15%, depend on the brand, depend on the continent. Uh, this is the franchisee model. Manchise is the model which had been created in uh, for the last five years or a little bit more. Uh, which is the mix of the uh, managed agreement and the franchisee agreement. So that's why they call manchise. Uh, the only difference is here is giving the flexibility to the owner uh, that in the incentive fee, it could be run uh, if I take the contract of the 10 years. So the first five years will be by the HMA managed uh, agreement. So other five years will be franchisee uh, model. Uh, what is the benefit in this? The benefit is that it's giving the flexibility to the owner. Owner is making sure uh, that it's not as per the um, operator. It's not as per the operator willingness. So there is a sort of negotiation, meet um, negotiation, something between managed and franchisee. So there is a control, but not more. And uh, there is a control and involvement from the uh, owner side. So this model became successful for the last five years in the industry. And the uh, majority of the owners are looking into this model and it's becoming successful. So that's why we call it average control, uh, which is a mix of the operator and the owner. And the, um, the charges goes as per the 10% to 17%, somewhere in between. Owner operator, uh, obviously you may know the local hotels, probably. In local hotels, there is no initial fee, obviously there is no IT charges or technical fee, or there is no um, fees that can be charged, it means owner can charge the operator to itself. So um, completely control goes to the owner. So it's all depend on what owner is going to initiate. Here, uh, there is, uh, a big damages that owner may not understand. Uh, for example, reservation fee that we have spoken earlier. Reservation fee is allowing hotel to connect globally, can be seen globally, inventory can be booked at any time. By not having the reservation uh, connection to GDS, basically means that you are not available in this world, you're not available in the internet. Of course, you can debate here, uh, say that, okay, it's enough to be in the booking.com. <coughs> Apologies. You can able to be in the booking.com and uh, that's enough. However, um, you have to understand that the whole system is not related on the booking.com only. If I may go to the market segmentation, obviously it's a different subject. If you go to sales and the revenue segmentation, the online OTA, what we call, is one of the segmentation. There are different segmentations as well, which you need to focus and you need to spread enough in order to have a, a sufficient yielding management, in order to have an inventory check, and etc. These are uh, not giving flexibility to the owner. Hence, there is a, a study which had been made it uh, for the hotel, those hotel who doesn't connect to the GDS, they may uh, understand that 15 to 20% of their uh, annual revenue is had been lost. Obviously it could be more or obviously it could be less, but in average at about the 20%. Uh, so you may understand the value of why we need the brand and why we need the brand's tools uh, and softwares. If you see the fifth model, it's the basically very simple one, owner-tenant. This 
model is very uh, spreaded in um, continent and countries like US and in Japan. Uh, they are basically building a boutique hotels, not more than 100, and they are renting on the specific agreement on the 10 years or 20 years as such. This is a fixed monthly rate. It's basically a rental agreement, uh, as simple as that. If you have any questions related to these, to these uh, models, to these agreements, please do not hesitate. Nija, just quick question, actually. I am very much interested in this topic. Mm -hmm. um, uh, due to due these pandemic issues, is there any, let's say, adjustment in the fees or any forecasted adjustment in the fees that might come with the big chains? Uh, one of the asset management role is to renegotiate the uh, agreements, these agreements. Obviously in such um, situation like pandemic is allowing the owners or owner representative or asset manager to go and uh, renegotiate with the uh, operator. Uh, regardless, it's the managed hotel, franchise hotel, or a franchise hotel, you can able to discuss, uh, you can able to renegotiate your further contractual period. So, for example, if you had signed your contract five years ago and your contract is for a 10 years, so remaining is the five years, you can switch from the managed hotel to the franchise hotel, which is uh, logical and which is uh, easily can be done by negotiating with the operator. However, if you are in the franchisee hotel, it will be a little bit difficult. Uh, why it will be difficult? Because there is no control by the operator. It's run by the owner himself. He is not um, looking any changes. But what lately uh, all the uh, operators did, whether you're a managed hotel or franchisee hotel, they have gave the support to the owners uh, by reducing the cost, reducing the IT charges, we're, we're calling it AMC, annual maintenance contracts. Annual maintenance contracts could be like an Opera, Micros, those charges have been uh, reduced significantly. Uh, there are the global agreements, global contracts that have been reduced significantly. So these are the power, these are the bargaining power of the operator that can influence you at your hotel. Uh, obviously, owner operator uh, model is not suitable and owner tenant is not suitable as well. However, what I can say in owner tenant, tenant can, <coughs> excuse me, oh, uh, tenant can. Uh, yes, Nijat, you can continue. Uh, I'm very sorry for the technical uh, difficulties. There was an internet uh, issue here. Yeah. So we will go back to our um, presentation. So the third thing what I want to discuss with you is the uh, owner operator objectives. So as you know, uh, each party have their own objectives. Obviously owner wants to generate more money from the, uh, from the hotel. The same goes to the operator. Operator wants to generate more fees uh, from the hotel. Uh, however, there are some obstacle situation that where you can see uh, the differences. I'd like to share with you some few of them. Um, so here you could see the, uh, the differences between the uh, owner and the operator objectives. For example, owners, if you will see in the, uh, the first factor, that some operational influences and the control over the asset, generally uh, trough aggressive asset management. What does it mean? As we, as we had spoken before, in the HMA agreement, owner wants to make sure that the operator is controlling the uh, hotel. They are controlling not in terms of the revenue and the cost. They're also looking for the physically about the hotel itself, the maintenance on time, doing the projects on time. <coughs> Sorry. This is giving the comfort zone to the uh, owner that hotel uh, is in the safe hands and managed and controlled um, under the operator agreement. Second is the some financial risk to be borne by the hotel company, generally through the agreement's incentive management fee structure. As we had said, there is the incentive fee. So there is a risk, financial risk, which operator is taking as well. 
which means <coughs> sorry which means um, operator is not just um, responsible for the revenue they are also responsible for the expenses as well you could able to see the many hotels that they are spending their money <clears throat> without any strategy without any plan without any um, uh, long-term plan this sometimes ruining the relationship between the owner and operator uh, an owner wants to make sure that uh, operator will take a risk if uh, hotel will do uh, if they will generate a good revenue and they will manage their cost they will able to make a profit and from this profit owner is giving the shares to the operator if they will not make a profit they will make a loss uh, operator will share their loss as well so this financial risk is covering in the incentive plan Third one is the clear monitoring and evaluating mechanism, including the right to meet the regular with the hotel company personnel to review the performance. Here, uh, owner is saying that I will be coming to the hotel a uh, few times whenever I want, and I will monitor uh, how, uh, what is the hotel performance. It could be employees, it could be service, it could be facility, it could be budget, it could be anything. The fourth one is the hotel company demonstrate appropriate and reasonable flexibility in tough times, especially as it relates to the brand standard. The owner know that this flexibility doesn't extend to the fee. Good owners make sure that the manager's fee get paid. There are many uh, issues. For example, uh, what Jay Hoon had uh, asked the question before. When there is a tough times, uh they have to be a negotiation they have to be an agreement obviously this this these tough times are coming external factor nothing related to the neither owner or uh, nor the uh, operator so they understand the situation for example pandemic is nothing that they could do they can influence so hence they can able to be flexible in this scenario and owner have to understand that regardless whatever it's happening you cannot uh you cannot freeze their fee operator's fee and not get paid you need to get paid to the owners unless if it's not a uh, breach of the contract breach of the contract is the different definition means uh, it could go to the termination of the contract means there is something wrong uh, legally financially that's proceeding in this way breach of interest so owner making sure that they have to pay uh their fees to the operator. Uh, the right approval annual operating budget and long-term uh, capital expenditure. So owner is approving the budget, sales and marketing strategy and FFE and CapEx uh, budget for every year. Uh, right uh, to asset manage the property uh, and the set strategic direction for the hotel. Owner uh, can set the strategy for the owner, can influence could be able to say, for example, I would like to renovate the restaurant or add one more restaurant or um, add new facility or services, which uh, they can influence. The seventh is the hotel company uh, to put the owner's interest ahead of the hotel company interest when it comes to the operation of the hotel. What does it mean? Hotel company, the operator, have to put the owner's interest ahead. Means owner's objectives, owner's interest comes always first. So for example, if uh, owners uh, are setting their objective related to the uh, return of investment, means ROI, um, operator have to make sure that reasonably and logically they will set the budget related to the owner's need. Yes, it could be some cases that the owners have a trophy asset, which means they have the asset which they are not expecting uh, more profit. Uh, this is a different scenario. However, majority of the owners are expecting the return. And in order to do that, in order to set uh, their strategy, hotel company need to 
put ahead the owner's interest, not their own interest. This is a very important point. Eight is the right to have input to the system-wide uh, initiatives to understand the cost association with the system reimbursement charges. Now, uh, this reimbursement charges normally goes into the loyalty fee. So for example, if you are the member of the one of the hotels and I'm staying there, uh, the charges, the fee charges of my stay goes to the operator. This had been called reimbursement, reimbursement to the operator itself. Owner have to agree, have to understand and agree into these terms. Uh, right to inspect the financial records of the hotel. Here, uh, as I said before, owner can uh, send his auditors, can send his <coughs> sorry, asset manager to check all the financial books or can set the uh, uh, international auditors uh, to come and check it to make sure that the uh, financial statement are in the uh, are in uh, transparent enough and the right to all cash uh, in ex uh, in excess of the work uh, working capital working capital is the uh, an amount which in the pre-opening or if the hotel is not uh, have sufficient uh, money, sufficient cash, owner have to give the uh, working capital in order to run the hotel. These are the pretty much the owner's objectives. So operator objectives are a little bit different. There are some similarities, but a little bit different. Uh, if you see the first one, the sole and exclusive right to manage the hotel without in-due ownership interference. In the agreement, this is known as non-disturbance clause. Non-disturbance clause means owner cannot come and uh, influence, uh, interfere, sorry, interfere into the uh, operation. Uh, one of the hotels, uh, I cannot say the name of the, uh, the brand. <clears throat> it happened very recently. Uh, just because owner was very uh, interfering into the um, hotel and hotel operation, uh, this chain, this hotel chain had terminated the contract. And it was very shocking news uh, in the market to see such, um, uh, such experience. Uh, owners have to know their rights and it's pretty much written in the contract to understand up to what limit they can able to uh, interfere or uh, influence. The second goes to the owner to assume all or most the financial risk. Uh, what does it mean? Owner have to understand that there are the financial risks, there are the expenses. These expenses sometimes for the owners are not logical. This expenses sometimes is um, questioned a lot that why um, these expenses, for example, why the sales team, sales managers had uh, flew to the business trip on the uh, business class, for example. This type of financial risk need to be trusted to the operator. If it's not trusted, they have to be uh, dedicated guidelines from the owners and operator agreement. I'm just giving you one of the examples. It could be any uh, financial risk. Uh, the third one is uh, to be uh, indemnified, uh, except of the gross negligence, fraud, or willful misconduct. Sometimes you could see that in the hotel they're happening some uh, issues. Obviously, it comes from the staff-wise. It could be a fraud cases. It could be misconduct. It could be uh, emblazement, for example, stealing, for example. In this type of uh, situations. Uh, in agreement, there is the definition, what kind of action plan need to be taken. I cannot go more into the details in this clause because it could be any uh, agreement. However, there is an agreement between the owner and operator if this kind of issues may occur and what to do in this type of cases. The fourth one is the uh, right to manage the property uh, consistently with the approved annual budget. So as, a, as you had seen in the owner's situation, owner's objective, owners are approving the annual budget. Operator here have to show annual budget. Normally it's happening in the uh, months of August and September. 
So uh, in October, uh, already has been presented to the owner and owner within the 15 to 30 days have to approve it for the coming year. Uh, it's not just the uh, annual budget, it's also the FFE and CAPEX and the sales and marketing strategy. The fifth one is the right to property funded for the approved capital expenditure budget and for any budget annual operation shortfalls. So here, if there is any um, short of the cash, working capital, owner have to provide to the operator and uh, approve the uh, budget and the CapEx plan. Sixth one is the right to operate the property according to the brand standard. Uh, this is one of the important points here. Uh, majority of the operators, as I said before, they are insisting to run the hotel with the brand standard, with the brand DNA, in order to show the quality uh, and uh, get the high revenue, uh, make sure that there is the guest satisfaction and the return of the guest. Sometimes owners are um, um, ignoring this uh, standards. It could be intentionally and unintentionally as well, obviously, but most of the time what I see that they are intentionally there uh, uh, forgetting about the brand standard. These brand standards, uh, missing brand standards can um, lead to the breach of contract. Operator can terminate the contract and uh, just because the standard, the brand standard is not have been complied by the owners. Uh, there is an example of the uh, in industry that we had seen that um, operator had uh, terminated the uh, contract because their standard, their health and safety standard, is not had been complied by the uh, owner. Owner not had didn't want to invest in the health and safety of the stand standards in the hotel, so operator have to. Uh, terminate the contract. The seventh one is the right to earn a fair management fee. Fair management fee in terms of the, there is obviously the fee, the percentage charges. However, it could be also the fixed uh, minimum charges that uh, they expect. Obviously it's uh, different cases, but it could be. The eighth one is the owner's uh, embrace of the working relationship with the hotel company corporate office. So if owner have any issues, they can not only discuss with the uh, hotel management, they can also discuss with the corporate office to find a solution and to make sure that this relationship is not had been broken. The ninth is the right to make all personal decisions at the property subject to the owner input on the general manager. Here, uh, operator is holding the right and responsibility to make any decisions in the hotel except if owner may call to the general manager and give some different instruction. Uh, this is also possible. Uh, and the thing, the last one, is the right to consist strategic directions from the owner. As I said it before, this is also matching with the owner's objective. Owner can uh, make uh, influence on some strategic decisions of the hotel. These are the um, pretty much giving you the objectives between the owners and operators. If you don't have any questions for this, please let me know. Uh, there is a one question actually from Wazir. Um, he's asking if I am a small and well established hotel operator in a local market, are there examples of such company tying up with established hotel or brand operator to grow my own brand? Actually, um, yeah, uh, this was the pretty much the question. Brand is this more goes into the international brand? I guess this is a more call to the international brand. Uh, may I speak? Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah so, um, yeah, I was basically the question I had was uh, so if I'm an owner operator who's well established within uh, just my local market. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, like I would like to sort of grow the brand internationally, like have uh, you know, foreign tourists come and stay here. Uh, I mean, obviously you do that like when you're established in the local market, but like 
you know, to kind of create more awareness and I want to expand my brand, my brand like globally. Uh, are there any good case studies or examples of uh, a company that's tied up with one of the more established brands like a Marriott or someone yeah. uh, to grow their brand internationally and to grow this particular brand? Um, yeah. yeah. So, you know, in the initial years, they tie up with Marriott, establish a bit of a global like, you know, awareness about their brand and then they grow organically from there? Yeah, uh, it's a good question. Uh, it could be in two scenarios, both scenarios actually. If the hotel is running uh, as non-branded hotel, as owner operator, later on he is uh, tidying up with a new agreement with the uh, uh, hotel chain. Or it could be vice versa in the, uh, in the different scenario. Uh, here you need to make analyze. Uh, there are obviously um, many types of uh, analyzing what you need to do. It's a supply, it's a demand, it's a brand contribution, how brand contribution is going to increase your re revenue, decrease your expenses, will it's going to give you the uh, international look, why are you uh, rebranding it, do you want to sell the property with the high value, or you want to pretty much more, uh, get more revenue in order to get more profitability. So in each segmentation, there is the two way of the present uh, two way of the analysis which you can do what if analysis maybe you had heard it in the uh, excel sheet what if uh, i will re uh, i will brand my hotel with the uh, international uh, chain and what if not i will run as is so the difference is you able to see that if you will of course it depend many factors and uh, please don't take my quote that every time the uh, in, uh, the uh, brands are successful. No, there are some cases that uh, the brands are not successful. Uh, it's not their market, it's not their understanding, or maybe there are too many uh, brands in the same city that already had been dominated the uh, and took the shares, the market share. So always need to make an analysis. What if, if I'll have the branded hotel? What if I will not have the branded hotel? In both of the scenarios, obviously operator will convince you to say that, no, don't worry. We'll be able to uh, generate more revenue, more profit. However, need to see logically, if they can able to do that, if uh, they have this power to do that. Uh, here, the asset managers, or if you don't, if the owner doesn't have the uh, qualified asset manager, could be international consultants, uh, consultants and company which can give an advice, a fair advice, that whether your property can generate I, more revenue. Sorry, I, I think I lost the sound. Where did you lose the sound? No, I, I was, I'm not able to hear Nijat right now. All conversation you didn't hear? No, just, just um, so you were talking about um, the, so, so, you know, like not all, sometimes the brands, have, like there are too many brands in the same city who've already taken a lot of the market share. So it might not be beneficial um, for new brand to come in. Right. Uh, yeah. So uh, again, you, uh, if uh, you approach the uh, operator, Definitely, they will say that I will make it more profit, more revenue. So they will make you satisfied. But uh, you need to understand that where this figure is coming from. So they will put in front of you the um, cash flow for the 10 years. And if you have any doubt, you can show to your asset manager, qualified asset manager. If you don't have the asset manager, you can approach to the international companies, consultancy companies. Uh, GLL, for example, HVS, uh, Colliers, uh, pretty much well-known uh, companies that they can able to give you a recommendation for you and the best scenario for your case. Right. Um, so are there like uh, any sort of out, like, um, outstanding case studies of, uh, you know, or, or like an example where such a company has gone on to establish itself as uh, you know on its own having used um, one of the established operators to to grow for the initial stages of growth 
I'm sure there is, but um, nobody is going to share this analysis with you. Uh, you know, why? The simple reason is that there is a P&O, uh, there is a profit and loss uh, report there, which is um, attached to it. No one is going to show you their figures, what was before and what was after. They can tell you theoretically whether it was beneficial or not beneficial. Uh, but uh, again, it all depends on the market, depend on the brand, depend on demand and supply, depend on the pricing, depend on so many factors that you have to analyze it before to go with the brand. Yeah, uh, no, I was actually asking for if, if you know of any examples uh, that you could maybe do off the From top of your head. Wise, you could... Yes, From experience itself, I know. But uh, I, I don't have any proof uh, for you to show you or to tell you. Uh, I can tell you that there is a hotel, for example, was um, a well-known hotel, well-known international brand. And after the, uh, they had terminated it, they became unsuccessful uh, entire, uh, for their entire life. I know the uh, case study where hotel brand was there, international hotel brand was there. After the termination agreement, terminating the agreement, <coughs> running the local brand, local name, they became very successful. So it all depends on the management. It all depends on the um, uh, analysis. It's not an easy answer for you. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. So um, I will show you one of the case study, uh, which uh, to make an understanding for you, the differences between the models and the agreements. Uh, <coughs> so for example, you may know the hotel ABC, five star hotel. It's located in the city. So, so we call it city hotel, urban hotel in downtown, very good location. Hotel with the 200 keys, restaurant, bar, meeting rooms, and the gym. So here are the, uh, in the PL wise, I made it for you. Obviously, this is assumption. This is not 100%. So 200 keys with the ADR, average daily rate of the $100, let's say. 80% occupancy. Again, this is assumption, not 100%. Calendar of 365 days and the staff with the 300 staff. So what they can generate? They can generate the room revenue, as you could see, um, total 8.5 million. Obviously, uh, departmental profit, again, is taking assumption that will be, <coughs> sorry, 6 million. Overheads, charges uh, with the GOP will be established about uh, 2.8 million. So from the 2.8 million, the GOP itself, you could see that in the management, uh, model, they will charge about 25%. So out of 2.8 million, 700,000 will go to the uh, owner, uh, sorry, to the operator's pocket. So basic fee is calculated from the revenue, incentive fee is calculated from the GOP, marketing fee is calculated from the room revenue, reservation fee, room revenue, loyalty fee, one of the segmentation of the room revenue. So all of these is going to come up for you about 714,000. Again, this is estimate, this is not 100%. So in the end, owner will be able to generate 2 million, almost 2.1 million profit. Well, you could see in the franchisee agreement, all the same, however, it's a less uh, fee. Why? Because there is no incentive fee. So we're assuming that if uh, management will be successful, if they will be uh, able to run a um, good strategy to generate the same revenue, you could be able to see that the management fee will be about 600,000. So here is slightly more profit, more about 10% more, uh, five to 10% more than the managed hotel. It doesn't mean that the franchisee is more successful than the managed. Again, it depends on the case. So for example, in the downtown uh, located hotel, I will not give into the franchisee agreement. Why? Because downtown is very uh, prestigious place. You need to be make sure that your decisions, your strategy will be very careful 
before it was taken. So owners need someone who can run the hotel. It could be asset manager or some very qualified general manager, or you could able to give to the HMA, the management agreement. If you have a qualified general manager, if you have a good asset manager, you could able to give to the franchisee agreement. So here is more dependent on the um, qualification and capability uh, of the staff. This is a pretty much is giving you the differences between the managed hotel and the franchisee hotel. So uh, this is it. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, participation. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to put it in the chat box or in our social media channel. Good, thank you, Nijat. So I do have another question here in the chat box. So basically, Vazir is also asking another question from the accountant perspective. Are there often disputes between the owner and the operator regarding the position of certain line items in calculation of GOP and AGOP, such as a FFNE reserve? And uh, also another question that- If I allowed, always followed strictly, yes. Good question. <coughs> in terms of the accounting perspective, if there is any dispute uh, between the owner and operator, Obviously, they can discuss. They can always discuss. Operator is very uh, much open into the discussion and negotiation. There is no harm in this. However, owner have to bring the very strong argument in front of the operator to prove the point. For example, um, um, in accounting, for example, some line items, uh, certain line items, for example, <clears throat> why you had purchased the towels or why you had purchased, I don't know, uh, OSNE items. This is not this strong argument. However, if there was any um, fraud cases, emblazement, stealing the cash, or on purposely harming the physical asset of the hotel itself, yes, this could be a very strong argument from the owner's side, which can bring to the owner's attention. Uh, if it goes to the FFNE reserve, FFNE reserve is always have been discussed uh, in advance and it's part of the agreement. The reason why I didn't want it, uh, why I didn't put it in the presentation is because FFNE uh, can be different. Um, when hotel is a newly opened, normally they're not charging much in FFNE. And FFNE is the owner's account, is not the operator's charges. This account is the reserve account, we call it a reserve account to make sure that in the future they could able to utilize it for the operational needs, operational requirement, replacement of some furnitures or equipments. So the structure goes as uh, less life cycle, uh, means less years of the, uh, of the uh, hotel age is, less you charge the FFNE. More uh, hotel ages growing, more FFNE charges will go, obviously. So if hotel is one to three years, they're charging one to 2%, three to five years, they're charging 3%, and five to 10 years, they may charge it 5%. So this is the reserve fund that goes uh, to the owner's account and strictly have been um, controlled by the owner. And in once in a year, owner, uh, is looking the uh, capex and the FFNE budget, which approves, uh, so uh, operator can proceed it. If there is any unbudgeted scenario, uh, have to be obtained the uh, owner's uh, approval in advance. In terms of the USALI, yes, uh, right now all the hotels are running the uniform standard system, USALI, and it has been updating every two or three years, if I'm not mistaken and is uh, follow strictly, yes. Okay, thank you, Nijat. Just, sorry, uh, just one more follow-up question uh, regarding that. Um, yes, so uh, in terms of, uh, so what, what happens in the scenario of the FFME reserve if uh, in, in um, uh, I mean, so, so what happens in a scenario where you have an owner-tenant uh, situation? So you just own the property, I understand, and the operator is, Pretty much in full charge of the PNL of the you know of the hotel operations, right? So in that situation, yeah, simple to explain to you that I'm renting my apartment 
to the uh, to the tenant uh, one year three years five years ten years whatever is the case it is and obviously you're putting the all the um, if there will be any damage if there will be any physical damage reputation or etc and it's a long-term agreement we call it long-term agreement <coughs> Right, so so the FFE reserve is still under the owner then. It's still under the in owner's the owner's tenant in owner's tenant case is not required. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. My pleasure. Okay, uh, I have another question actually. Nijat still was thinking about uh, once it started with the COVID. Uh, do you think that uh, are you do you have any let's say expectations that more and more uh, hotel owners will be going with the small chain operators in the future in order to reduce the cost or they're going to still continue with the big brands? I don't think so uh, because in generally uh, there is a power of the brand. The brand is bringing uh, a loyalty members. For example, each brand they have the 30 or 40 million of the loyalty members. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, in generally each brand is con contribution of the each brand website gives um, 15 to 16 percent uh, could be more could be less in average 16 percent into the revenue stream also uh, with the global agreements um, uh, in terms of the cost you can able to reduce it uh, global agreement for example with booking.com for example if you are the uh, owner operator case uh, they will charge you about 20 to 22 percent when it's the uh, international chains it's 14 to 15 percent so these are the uh, power always the bargaining power that's giving to the brands to be more successful if you make the what if analysis for example if i'm the branded hotel or i'm non-branded hotel you will see that there's a lot of value in the uh, branded hotel obviously also depend on the uh, city depend on the market itself there are so many uh, cities, maybe you know better, in our hometown, Baku. There are so many uh, non-branded hotels are more successful than the international uh, yeah. brands. Why? Because they have been established it before. Why? Because their rates are more affordable. So expectation is not that much and standards you cannot expect it too much. Why? Because the lo location-wise, it's more premium. So there are many cases like that. So uh, there is no right answer saying that uh, the brand is more beneficial or non-branded it depends on many analysis uh, maybe i can share how to evaluate the um, uh, the performance of the brand so you can able to know whether it is beneficial or not so there is a chart where you can able to uh, analyze the different segmentations different uh, performances benchmarks hence you can able to understand your hotel is doing better with the brand or without the brand. Perfect. Perfect, Nijat. I guess uh, we have already uh, almost on the more than the one hour we are doing the live uh, session. So I have checked that we don't have any questions so far. Thank you very much for today's uh, very professional talk, let's say, in the Astral Asset Management. We will continue definitely with these topics uh, in upcoming sessions as well, time to time, not to make bored the people, we will bring some other topics in the light of the, uh, of the webinar, so we will discuss with the different uh, experiences. So thank you very much for participation today. We will be looking forward to see you in our next uh, webinar series on the next, next week, and we will be announcing the uh, poster and the, the topic as well for next week after the after the webinar Thank you very much. and please feel free and uh, subscribe to our uh, channels and uh, stay tuned we'll be uh, having the next webinar soon thank you very much thank you goodbye, goodbye.